Hi everyone, it's Carla here. We are going to be working with the Jazz Art Byron acrylic colour today and we're going to be focusing on understanding the temperature of colour, looking at the cool primaries and the warm primaries, which we call a six colour mixing system. So when we use the cool and the warm colours together, we can get really lovely, clean, bright secondary colours. So here we've got our cool yellow, cool red and cool blue. And of course the same thing in the warm, warm yellow, warm red and warm blue. So you can see side by side, say for example with the yellows, which we'll be using quite a lot of today, we've got a very cool yellow. Its bias is quite um, cold and it's veering towards uh, your very, very citrusy lime colours. Here you can see this has got a much warmer bias to the yellow and it's almost varying towards orange and it's going to make some really beautiful oranges. So we're going to be focusing on our yellows today particularly um, and using the cool yellow to make zesty limes and our warm yellow to make beautiful bright oranges. Of course we're also going to be using the warm red and the cool red as well as the cool blue and the warm blue. Let's get started. So today we are going to be working on painting citrus using the six color mixing system. So we're going to be starting off with our yellows and painting first our lemons. Okay, and you can see this really cool citrus yellow, very, very vibrant and zesty cool yellow. Now, over here on the template, we have the um, color wheel with all of the six colors in the color wheel placed alongside the resulting secondary colors that you can create with those. So you can see here we've got the cool yellow very very close to the lovely zesty lime greens which we're going to be making. We have got the warm yellow which is very close to the oranges which we will also be mixing. Coming through to the warm red and once we get to the cool red we'll be using that for our pink grapefruit and the cool blue is mixed with the cool yellow to make our limes. But I'll step you through that all now together and we'll go step by step through this template. All right, so here we have the finished work and we are gonna be working from this template with the Byron paint. So before I start, I prefer to use some tape. That's just me, you don't have to. I just find that it gives a really nice edge at the end and that can be a technique that you can use in other paintings if you wish to, particularly if you're working on paper. Keep in mind if you do choose to use a masking tape to choose one that um, isn't going to lift off the paper when you lift off the masking. So I prefer to use um, one that's like a low tack or a delicate so you can see here this is it says delicate there. I'm just going to place that along. Like so. Okay, so now you can see I have masked up my template and I'm ready to paint. Now you'll need some brushes. I've got an assortment here. I certainly don't need that many. That would much would suffice. Maybe a bigger one and a smaller one for a bit of detail and just to get some fine edges. I've also got the six colors plus a white. Now I use a lot of white, so I've actually got a really, I've got a one liter white, but a tube will be enough for this. That's just because I have used this all the time in the studio. And I've got some paper towel. Okay, so the paper towel is just a useful thing to use after washing your brushes. I've also got some water and I'm going to get myself a tear off palette. Alright, so now I've got uh, my paints, I've got my tear off palette ready. I use a Reeves tear off palette, that's a really standard thing for me to use in the studio. Um, now we're going to be starting off with our yellow, so you can just pop the rest of the paint to one side and we're going to start off using our cool yellow. Okay, 
Now, acrylic paint doesn't like to be um, diluted with too much water, so just work with a damp brush. And we're going to start popping in our lemons. And I'm going to start with a lemon here. So I'm just going to pop a little dash there so I know that I'm doing a lemon there. And I'm also going to do a lemon here. Now we have some shapes in the template which I popped in. And you don't worry too much if you get some of these edges um, worked over because you can actually come in with some white at the end and put the pith back in. So we might try our best to keep the edges clean, but if you don't if you don't get them in, which I've just missed one there, that's totally fine. If you've got the masking, it's actually nice and easy to be able to pop those edges in like so. Working to the edge of the masking. Now you can see that this is an extremely cool yellow. And the way we understand if a colour is cool or warm is where it sits on the colour wheel. So its position on the colour wheel and what colours it can actually create. So because I have this really, really cool yellow, I'm going to be able to, after quite soon, make some really beautiful zesty limes. Now if I used a warm yellow, it would end up with um, a lot more gentled green, not so zesty and bright. And that's because the yellow tends, the warm yellow tends more towards orange on the color wheel in its relationships. And therefore it has more warmth, because it has more warmth in it and it's nearing towards orange, it sort of has a bit of a red bias. And because it's got that orangey red bias to it, although it's definitely not an orange, it's just got a warmer, uh, it's just a lot warmer. It means that it will create a muted green. And the reason for that is because it's got a red bias in it, well, orangey bias and orange and red are very close to each other. And what happens is if we look at the wheel, here, you can see here that cool yellow, here we are, which we're using right now, then we have warm yellow. Now warm yellow is closest towards oranges, right? You can see that an orange has red in it. Now when you look at your reds on the colour wheel, you'll see that the direct opposite is green. So when we go to mix our greens, if our yellow has ne nearest towards orange, and it has therefore a red bias, an orange bias, a warmth to it. Essentially, it's because it's coming closer and closer towards red, this yellow is actually going to slightly mute the green. So we're gonna get a softer green, um, a more uh, recessive or olivey kind of green, rather than a really, really bright green like this. And the same goes if you have a green, if you had a green straight from a tube or you've made a bright green, if you wanted to mute that green, all you need to do is add the opposite on the color wheel, which is a red, and that's going to mute that green straight away. And you just need the tiniest bit, and the more that you add, the more muted that green will get. So I've just popped in my lovely bright cool yellow. Now I'm just going to come in and pop the skin of that lemon in as well. So I'm just going around like so and sloshing that in. So. 
definitely get into this one as well. Going around. Now to work with that, at the moment you can see that's really zesty and bright. Now, of course, a, la a lemon rather. Um, and so of course a lemon has got that real lovely bright flesh. But it also has a bit of warmth to it. So we're going to play with contrasting and working together with the cool and the warm yellow. So I've got some warm yellow there as well. Okay. So now we're going to use some warm yellow. We're going to come in and pop the warm yellow around the rind, leaving some of the cool yellow showing, like so. We're just doing the edge of the lemon, skin of the lemon, and then again. Such a yummy fruit to cook with. I love grated lemon zest. Delicious. Okay, now what we want to do is also add a bit of dimension, not just to the skin, the rind of the lemon, but also to the actual flesh of the lemon. So we're going to now also play with um, the fact that this paint also dries with a slight raise is a medium bodied paint. So we're going to come in and just pop some lovely shapes of the flesh of the lemon, like so. We're not going to do them everywhere, but we are going to do some. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on top of the base coat with our cool yellow as well. And you can see that looks quite effective. We're going to repeat that process for this lemon over here. With both the cool yellow and the warm yellow. Pop a little bit of warm yellow on there as well. Alrighty, so there we have our lovely lemons. Now we'll come in and pop some more detail onto those shortly, but we're going to come along and actually do some more of our fruits now. So now, after using the yellows, we're going to come in and use our cool blue. And we're going to be creating our zesty limes. So you can see here on the colour wheel, now we've used our cool yellow and our warm yellow to make our lemon. Now we're going to take our cool yellow and mix it with our cool blue. And we're going to mix a really zesty lime here and also a medium green. And we're going to use that for the rind of the lime as well, as well as some of the details in the lime. There's some cool blue. Now to create our lime, we really want to just take literally a brush prick of blue, cool blue, and mix a little tiny bit at a time. You can see how it shifts the cool yellow very quickly, just with the tiniest bit. So start off with lots of your cool yellow and just add tiny bits of cool blue. You can see that's a really lovely zesty lime. So I think that's probably about what we're looking for. So I'm going to start filling in my limes now. So I'm going to make this one here a lime. And I'm going to also pop a lime over here. There's a little lime down here. 
and another line down here. Now of course you could change up your fruit, you don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing, it just happens to be where I've sort of balanced out the fruit according to where I first chose to put something. You want to be get a bit more accuracy, you can just choose to use a smaller brush for this. I'm just popping them in like so. prefer to use a smaller brush for the skins. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the lime that we've already made and we're going to add a little bit of cool blue to it and we're going to mix now a medium green. Can you see just by adding that little bit of blue, I've changed my green. I actually do want to use some of the cool yellow with this cool blue with that to get that real zesty lime and use a bit of that to actually still create the lovely bits of texture in the fruit so I'm gonna leave some of that aside and I'll keep making this one a medium green okay so again I'm going to use now that green and I'm going to come along and just pop the outside of the skin, the lemon rind, sorry lime rind, not lemon, on the outside there. With the lime, I'm again going to use the brush to get little bits of suggestion of detail into the flesh of the fruit. And again, do that with that zesty lime green that I've reserved down there as well. We've got some lovely suggestions of raised texture where the light can hit and play on that. So we've now done our lemons and our limes. And now we're going to move on to our lovely oranges. So to do our oranges, we're going to be using our warm yellow and warm red and that's going to make really lovely vibrant oranges so now it's time to get the warm red out and we're going to combine that with the warm yellow so the same thing that we did when we went to go make our greens we really want to gradually add one color to the other so we're just going to be using just a little bit of the warm red and we're going to be gradually adding that to the warm yellow. Make sure your brush is really well washed off. Okay, just checking both of them. Yep, excellent. So a little bit at a time of warm red to the warm yellow. You can see straight away because that yellow is so nice and warm I'm really getting a lovely warm yellowy orange. Now I might just go slightly oranger, so just a little bit more of the warm red. And I think I'm happy with that orange now. It's a really lovely warm orange, but it's not too 
got too much red in it because we really want to have that accent orange of the that's warmer that comes around and does the um, detailing with the skin and, and the flesh as well like we've done for the others so we'll soon go in and add some warm red to this color so I'm having one orange here And I'm also going to pop an orange up here, pop that there so I don't forget, and we'll also pop an orange here. Because the warm yellow is so vibrant and so is the warm red, they're really close to each other on the colour wheel, which means that when we go to mix our secondaries, being the orange in this case, it's going to be a really vibrant orange, which is exactly what we've got. And that's really beautiful. I'm enjoying using this colour. to get the rind of the orange in. Now don't worry about your circles being perfect. No fruit is perfect. They all are a little bit wonky, even if they're round. Um, that's nature. Nothing is completely perfect, particularly fruit off a tree. Gives it more personality. We're going to make a warmer orange again. We're going to take a little bit of warm red and we're going to mix it with this to make a medium orange. All right, so we've got our really lovely warm medium orange now, which we've just added more warm red to. And we're going to go in and around again, exactly the same process we've done for all of our other fruits just come in and add the outside of the skin and again we'll come in and we'll pop some of the different textures of the fruit like so Now I've got some of the other yellow, sorry, the other orange that I was using and I'm just, whoops, and pop a little bit more warm yellow just to get that other warmer yellowy orange back and use a little bit of that to get a little bit of detail in as well, just like so. All 
right, so now I'm feeling quite happy. I've got my lemons, my limes, and my oranges in. And this is where we have really played with making two out of three of our secondary colors. So the secondary colors mean the colors that you make with using two colors. So we've you taken our cool yellow and our cool blue and we've made our limes and we've taken our warm yellow and warm red and we have made our oranges. And then of course we've also used our two yellows to start off with our lemon. So, now we are up to experiencing the beautiful cool red and we're going to be using that with our zesty sweet grapefruit. You can see how nice and cool that cool red is. It's really great for making purples, which we're actually not going to be making today. But just keep in mind the cool red is excellent to make beautiful purples. So I'm just going to pop some of my pink grapefruit in. If I take this cool red and I wanted to mute a green, I could. So see, I've got my green here. If I add a little bit of red to it, can you see straight away that makes something towards brown? If I wanted it to be a more olivey green, I would just use less of the red and more green and I would have an olivey green there. And that's because red mutes softens, mutes, dulls down the green it's because they are opposites on the colour wheel. We're not going to use that colour though, we're all up to the, the bright colours today. Okay, so now we are going to be again popping in some more ruby red grapefruit, which I love having at breakfast time in winter. Popping them all in, and then I'll come in and I won't forget the rind, which we'll do slightly differently because the ruby red grapefruit seems to be more pinky on the inside and a bit more orangey pink on the outside, like a coral colour. So we're going to mix a different colour for that. Alright, so we're going to just actually take some of that orangey colour that we had on the palette and mix it with the cool red just to get a bit more of a sort of semi softer, corally pinky orange. And that's going to go on the outside, make it slightly pinker. Now we've got, what we're going to do is we're going to take that same colour, we're going to mix a bit of whoops, white in. And we just want that real sort of soft, 
coral pink color. That's gonna be really good for the pith of the ruby red grapefruit. I'm just gonna pop in now. little bits of extra dimension to that pink grapefruit. Not too many of those because we're going to actually take that cool red and make a lovely pink using the white. And we're also going to pop some pink into our pink grapefruit. It might be nice to even get almost that pithy kind of colour and just add little tiny bits to that, like almost the sheen of the pink grapefruit flesh. Okay, so that's feeling quite good now. Now we're going to be doing the tablecloth, but before we do that, we're going to actually come in and we're going to pop some seeds into some of our citrus fruits. So to do that, we're going to take the warm blue And we're going to use the warm blue alongside our other two warm colours, which is our warm red and our warm yellow, which we've already used up here. And let's grab those and we're going to mix those together to make a brown. So I've got too much blue on my brush at the moment, so I'm going to pick up some more yellow and some more warm red. And you can see that depending on the percentage, I can make various different types of browns. If I add more yellow, I'll get More like a straight brown, I guess. And here we've got a ready brown. So we'll go for something in between, like so. Okay, and we're gonna now do our seeds. We're gonna pop our seeds in. So we're gonna pop, now there was some on the template. It really doesn't matter where you pop them though. So I'm just gonna pop one here, one in here. Okay, we don't want to pop too many in, so I'll just pop a couple into the orange. Now take the white and make that a really lovely light soft brown so not much white at all sorry not much brown at all and we're going to add the highlights okay i'm not going to be popping any into the line because I usually don't find seeds in my limes. Some white, and now we're going to make the pith of the other fruits. So I'm going to first use some of this, just with that orange on the palette, to make a very subtle orange. Very, very subtle. And that's to go around in the orange. Now you don't have to do this, but um, if you feel like you've missed or got some edges wrong or just want to make this a more painterly look, um, you can pop the paint in where the white is.
Now we're going to mix some white with the lime that we have to make a really, really pale green. And we're going to use that for the pith of the lime, just filling in each of the gaps like so for all the limes. Okay, so next we're going to make a really, really light tint using the white with the lemon yellow, which is the cool yellow. Now take that really pale tint of cool yellow and use it for the pith of the lemon and fill in each of those linear gaps between the sections of the lemon. Okay, so now we've got all of our fruit in, we're going to pop the tablecloth in, starting off with the cool blue and working the stripes in like so. Just block the stripes in and then we'll go in and add further detail and dimension. Okay, so we've got the base coat of our tablecloth in. So now we're going to take the warm blue and add some extra richness, which you can see I'm just popping in now. And just adding that in various amounts in bits and pieces around the tablecloth. Not necessarily all of it, but just some parts of it. Okay, so now we're going to get some white with the tiniest bit of blue, either one is fine, and just pop in that really pale blue into the areas where the white gaps are in the stripes of the tablecloth. And that's just going to make um, each part of the painting look considered, every part of it has got paint on, and also just neatening up any edges and also adding a little bit of personality to the white of the um, stripes so it's not just white per se but has a little bit of extra colour and dimension to it. So as you can see it's now finished uh, which is very exciting and I think it looks fantastic. So now we can get on to having the satisfaction of peeling the tape off like so and you'll see you can just see that really lovely clean edge. Excellent. Pull it gently um, when you remove this tape so that it doesn't damage the paper. Yay, I totally love this part. Yoohoo, peel and reveal. How good does it look? So love the clean edges. It's such an effective method. Thanks so much for joining me today to learn more about the cool and warm primaries and to paint the citrus with the jazz art and acrylic. I hope you had a lot of fun and learnt something new. See you again next time.